Hey YouTube, Planet Aquarium MN, bringing you a real quick video today. I've um, had quite a few questions actually uh, over the past few months on um, you know some of the technical questions on my discus tank and what I'm using for lighting, what I'm using for substrate, what I use for filtration, and uh, you know a bunch of questions like that. And um, I decided I'm actually going to make just a, uh, a an overview, a complete overview of this tank and hopefully answer a bunch of those questions and um, you know maybe give some people uh, some ideas or thoughts or um, you know um, you know at least answer the questions anyways but um, you know I'm gonna start out by um, you know just talking about the tank the substrate the lighting and then the filtration but the tank itself is a five foot 120 gallon tank it's um, you know 60 inches long it's 18 inches deep and 26, I believe, 26 inches high. So it's a nice tall tank, makes a great discus tank. Uh, for substrate, this is nothing more than your pool filter sand that you're going to pick up at uh, Best Buy, or not Best Buy, at uh, um, Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot. It's like $6 a bag for a 50-pound bag. I've got, I believe, two bags in here. Um, I don't think I used uh, tapped into the third bag, but uh, there's at least two bags in here. Uh, I've got one piece of driftwood in here that I picked up off of Evil Bay for 30 bucks, and that included shipping, 30 something plus shipping. Um, for uh, plants, just Amazon swords. I've got um, you know a big one over there, three smaller ones. I've got a little kind of a medium to bigger size one over here, picked up from Brian at Dolly VH, and then I plopped in a little bit of Blixa Japonica, and that is it. Uh, to me, for, for a disc escape, I like to keep the scape simple. And that was the intention of this uh, tank. Keep the scape simple, but yet elegant and, uh, uh, you know, beautiful lines, but highlight the fish. Uh, discus tank, for me, is all about the fish, and um, I believe I got away with that and pulled it off with the scape. Um, so, pool filter sand, Amazon, swords, Blix of Japonica, driftwood, and that's it. Okay, inside the tank, you're going to notice, well, hopefully I can catch that without too much uh, reflection. I've got two overflow tanks, the overflow, uh, overflow boxes rather. The overflow box on the left goes down to my wet dry system and uh, feeds the uh, bio tower of my wet dry, and I'll show you that in a minute. The uh, smaller uh, overflow box on the right actually is exclusively for a uh, 200 micron filter sock which I have hanging inside of my sump uh, past the bio tower on the um, in the wet dry. My return nozzles, I've got a double return nozzle system here. I don't know, it's kind of got some bad glare there, really apologize for that. There's one right there and there's another one and I picked those pieces up off of Amazon for like five bucks for each nozzle and uh, they're completely uh, adjustable so I can adjust that flow anywhere in the tank that I want um, you know up down over sideways across now also in this tank I've got two 800 gallon per hour water circulation pumps right there and right there and I've got uh, actually I've got a third one down here a little smaller one back there and these come on these are all on timers the circulation pumps and these are on timers and each pump comes on twice a day at alternating times or different times so and they come on for a 30 minute debris sweep so this one will come on let's say I think it's like 11 o'clock in the morning then this one comes on at noon and this one comes back on at 5 and then this one comes back on at 6 and they run for a half an hour and that just kicks up puts extra flow in the in the water table uh, stirs up a bunch of the fish poo in the waste and that allows it to get filtered uh, down into the filtration system this one here also comes on when this pump over here kicks on and that's to get a bunch of the stuff that uh, likes to collect behind those amazon swords because there's not a lot of water current so that's what I've got going on inside the tank. And again, here's the uh, two overflow boxes that I have hanging on the back. Again, I've got uh, these two are feeding the filter. This one here is feeding the filter sock. Um, inside the canopy, nothing but Phoenix. I've got, uh, that's my Monster Ray, 48 inch Monster Ray. And then I've got a pair of 36 inch 
or excuse me, 30 inch, um, 30 inch Ray 2s, single, uh, two single strips, uh, 30 inch Ray 2s. Now down here in the filtration system, this is a double sump wet dry system that I've got plumbed together with two two inch bulkheads. Um, I've got a freshwater refugium in here that I feel is working out extremely well. Um, but let me just kind of give you an overview of the uh, of the system, the filter system. I got uh, the eShops PF1000 has two drains. And those drains are feeding this bio tower right here. In the uh, drip tray, I've got 100 micron felt in there underneath a piece of foam to cut down on the on the splashing. Um, and then inside the bio tower, it's about I think the capacity is only about five gallons. I've got uh, a bunch of um, Marine Pure, which are those white little balls, very porous. Each Marine Pure, according to the manufacturer, is equivalent to like 1,400 plastic bio balls as far as surface area. But I've got a bunch of uh, Marine Pure, a gallon and a half of Marine Pure in there. And then I've got uh, several gallons of the old uh, plastic bio balls because they came with this wet dry when I piece it together. Um, Underneath the wet dry, my water level is right here, so this area here stays submerged all the time. And I've got Fluval Biomax, uh, I've got some Seachem uh, Pond Matrix in there, and that stays submerged all the time. Um, and then underneath, I've got uh, there's a settling chamber here where you know some waste and uh, uh, poo and whatnot resides, and um, you know it gets past the felt and, and whatnot. And I do a vacuum on that every couple weeks. Water then passes up through a, uh, I've got two sponges here, a 30 ppm and a 20 ppm sponge. They flow up through this chamber here and over into this chamber here where I've got three bags of Purigen. And then I've got a couple more layers of uh, media filtration pad underneath that. Inside this chamber here, I've got two 200 watt cobalt aquatic neotherm heaters, um, keeping the temperature at 86 degrees on this tank. This here is the eShops overflow, or excuse me, the eShops filter sock that I had mentioned, and there's the tube coming down from that second overflow box right there, and that's feeding this filter sock. And this is 200 microns, and that's just resting on the uh, rim of the uh, wet dry sump here. And that's done a fantastic job keeping this water, uh, you know, even more clear than it was before. Um, I do have air stones in each chamber of my wet dry. I've got one there, I've got one over here, and then there is a air stone back in this chamber as well. And that's just to eliminate any white film or protein film that you might get on the uh, water column. And to just add extra oxygenation or extra oxygen to the water. Um, that's the first pump or sump that it's plumbed together with this sump here with two two inch bulkheads. There's one right there. In here I've got Hygrophila polysperma sunset. It's a fast growing stem plant. I did not want any fast growing stem plants in this discus tank. And I wanted to uh, eliminate the need for me having to reach my hands in there every week and so forth. So I put fast growing uh, stem plants down here in the refugium and they absorb all the nitrate or assist in absorbing nitrate. A couple pieces of Blixer Japonica I have in there. For lighting, I've just got a little clamp-on uh, DIY deal from Home Depot for six bucks and an LED bulb that I spent about 20 bucks on. And then I just picked up for Christmas, I picked up a 12-inch Phoenix Fuchsia Ray Planted Plus, and I love it. And I'm probably gonna get a second one, eliminate this here, and just have two Phoenix Fuchsia Ray Planted Plus over the refugium portion, but uh, polysperma is responding excellent to the uh, fuge ray and those tips are starting to purple up and, and look real nice. But So anyways, after the refugium, it goes through a final foam block here where I've got the final baffle and then my return pump, which is a, a quiet one, uh, 5,000 here. And then uh, back to the tank. and. Because I've got the two overflow boxes, I've got a ball valve here, no need to actually dial that back. I'm running this thing full throttle and getting a little over 900 gallons an hour flowing through there. And you look at the, the plants on here, it doesn't look like you're, it's flowing 900 gallons an hour through that refugium, but it is. 
So, um, nice flow through there. And because I've got the adjustable returns, I can put the flow where I need it so it's not blowing the discus around. It works out real well. So, anyways, hopefully that, that answered uh, some questions. Um, you know, it's kind of quick and brief, but uh, if anybody still has some additional questions, please let me know. But the tank's working really well. The filtration system is awesome. Um, you know, I'm doing water changes about 50% every other day minimum. And I know that I probably don't need to do that many because I know this filtration is keeping up and burning those nitrates. So, um, but it works. The discus are happy, healthy, colorful. So, anyways, that's that. If you have any more questions, let me know. I appreciate everybody watching my channel and checking in. And uh, like always, we'll catch you guys later.